Now, for the first time in its 106-year history, the Royal College of Nursing has called on its 300,000 members to walk out after a majority of nurses voted in favour of strike action. They could soon be joined on the picket line by paramedics, who are also set to be balloted on strike action in the coming weeks. And if that happens, it's reported that the army will be drafted in to drive ambulances and assist on 999 calls, much like they did during the coronavirus pandemic. The Prime Minister has also said that the nurses' union's demands are completely unaffordable. So to tell us more, I'm joined by the Health and Social Affairs Editor at the Sunday Express, Lucy Johnston. Lucy, thank you very much for your time. Could you start off by telling us why nurses have voted for strike action and what the demands are? Are you viewing it as likely that they'll strike some kind of halfway house, maybe? I think it's likely they may have to in the end, but um, I think morale has never been so low. And I think they are also striking because of, as they say, 10 years of real term, real wage cuts in real terms. So over the last 10 years, um, they've uh, had their pay not in line with inflation, not increase. And so they're effectively doing one day extra a week for free. So they're trying to claw back that. And I think they've reached a tipping point and they must be pretty angry because nurses don't uh, don't do this easily. They don't want to harm patients at all. So, but I, as we know, the, uh, the prime minister has already said that that's not, it would equate to £9 billion, what they're asking for, 17.6% pay rise. Um, and he said that's unaffordable. Yeah, I mean, Lucy, what would your message be to viewers who are saying, well, hang on a minute, I've got an appointment at my local hospital coming up soon. I'm really worried that actually it's going to get cancelled at a time when we are facing backlogs, right? The NHS is under immense strain. Is now really the time for nurses to be going off on strike? I think we're coming into midwinter. Um, we've got the double whammy of COVID and other respiratory infections. Um, uh, we have an immune debt because of the lockdown. So we didn't get exposed to pathogens during there. So we have a bigger pool of people who will be vulnerable and susceptible to infection. We also have a record waiting lists and record numbers of people who are seeking care. The system has been running uh, at at, it's, it's been higher, higher demand since August, really, in many places, and it's not let up. So that's that's summer. We're coming into winter, and I I think it is a really bad time to go into a strike um, because we're going to have an increase in demand, and, and it looks like the emergency health system could just well collapse because many patients, if they can't get appointments, if they're waiting, if they're struggling, they just end up in A&E, which, as we know, is already overwhelmed. So how likely do you think it's going to be that we do see members of the British Army, the armed forces, acting as paramedics because the paramedics have gone on strike too? It's hard to say. I mean, it depends where you are in the country. Many hospitals uh, will they do that they, they will get round things and um, we know that you know uh, locums may be drafted in we've just seen last week in the press I think um, the, uh, hospitals are paying up to 2,500 pounds a shift for locums which is obviously costing the NHS more um, I think some parts of the country where there are higher waiting lists and where there are more nurses who are part of the union who have agreed to strike they will be facing more problems and they include the southwest Devon Cornwall I think Birmingham as well and there's some new research out just in the last 24 hours that um, suggests around nine around three million people will um, have to have surgeries postponed. So those people will have to wait. Yeah, I mean, Lucy, just very, very briefly, if you would, uh, one of my viewers has emailed in saying that the NHS has spent in excess of £480 million last year recruiting staff through agencies. I don't know if that figure uh, is, a, a, you know, the accurate one. I'm not I haven't got the figures in front of me. But the the fact that agencies are being paid this money, I'm asking... And my viewers asking, why don't we just give that to nurses? 
Well, exactly. But it's all to do with, uh, you know, nurses are sort of, they, they move on, don't they? They get fed up and then they move to other hospitals. Some nurses are leaving. And when you haven't got a nurse to fill a shift, the hospitals are having to take the action of, of getting in a locum because otherwise it's less safe to run. So the system, I mean, we've had five health secretaries in just I two know, years. I know. They're coming in as if they're going in the jungle. Um, we need to have someone that has a long-term view and looks at the bigger picture and gets to understand it properly. No one's looking at the fundamental problems within the health service, yeah. which include an IT system that doesn't talk to each other. So hospitals can't talk to GP surgeries, even within regions. We've got um, a working week, which stops pretty much or large part of it at the weekend. So we've got an increase in death rates around the weekend of about 10 or 11 percent and all that that leads to a blocking in the system and it stops the flow we've got as you know social care where people are not able to get decent uh, help in the community or decent care in the community so they're about 10 percent of people in hospital yeah, beds Lucy, it needs moment. stability doesn't it that's what it needs it needs a, a health secretary who's actually going to be in the post longer than how long was Therese coffee in there it's obscene but lucy we're going to have to leave it there lucy johnson health and social affairs editor at the sunday express i thank you very much for your time thank you.